Hello again, this is Lock Noob, and this video is a comprehensive video about the history, mechanical workings, and picking of the Chubb AVA or AVA or AVA, first described in UK patent application 1030921 in February 1963. Throughout this video, though, I will be referring to it as the Chubb AVA or AVA. So, the AVA locking mechanism can be found in all types of Chubb, or now Union, locks, including the Hercules, the Conquest, the Chubb Guardian door locks, bullet cam locks, the small cam locks found in cupboards and cabinets, padlocks, and even, rarely, handcuffs. It's easy, if a little misleading, to think of the mechanism of the AVA as being like a standard wafer lock rather than a disc detainer lock, something like one of the abloid disc detainers like this. You can see this in the wafer lock, you have a set of wafers which are set above and below the shear line that get pulled or pushed down to the correct shear line by the correct key. The main difference between a wafer lock and the Chubb Ava is that the wafers, or sliders as the original patent describes, are not sprung. So here is a small cam lock version of the Chubb Ava and you can see inside there the sliders. The key will go in and you'll see that it opens up the lock, but unlike a wafer lock, the sliders are not sprung. Let's take one of these apart quickly, and you can see that you just have a free floating stack of sliders inside the lock core itself. They are held in position just by a spring, and depending on the type of have a lock, the spring can either be at the bottom or at the top of the stack of sliders. The patent describes this mechanism as a lock comprising a cylindrical magazine rotatably mounted in a casing and having a plurality of sliders. When locked, the sliders extend out of the core into cutouts in the body of the lock casing arresting the rotation of the core. So if we put the correct key in, the correct orientation and turn it, you'll see all the sliders align to shear. The larger sliders found in all but the smaller cam locks come in three variants where the sides of the sliders extend outwards from the center by different increments. The sliders may have an integral or separate spaces between them. There is a 5 to 1 slider, a 3 to 3 slider, and a 4 to 2 slider. The 5 to 1 and 4 to 2 sliders can also be rotated in the opposing orientation to become a 1 to 5 and a 2 to 4 slider respectively. This makes a set of up to five different sliders. The larger Avalox have 10 sliders in each lock, which can be in any combination, and they don't have to include all of the five slider variants. In total, the number of theoretical key combinations for a 10 wafer AVA is close to 10 million. From the key, you can see how its rotation can displace the sliders by varying degrees. Here are the different key cuts shown as slices through the key and how they come to move the sliders to their shear line accordingly. The keys in these larger AVA locks locate in the lock only one way round, and this is controlled through subtle profiling in the keyway to correspond with the key, with one side of the profile being larger than the other. And you can see here that we have a smaller side of the keyway there and a larger one, which will allow the key to pass through in this orientation but not when rotated round to this orientation. You can actually see the key itself with the bitting being slightly off center, and that will correspond with that subtle profiling in the keyway. 
Another feature of the larger Avalox is that the sliders contain false gates on all the sides of the sliders apart from the one side. These are designed to catch on the core if the core is tensioned as if to pick or manipulate the lock without a key. The 1963 patent describes these as a notch with the engagement occurring when an improper attempt is made to rotate the cylinder and plates by manipulation. Interestingly, this design was not the first generation of Avalok described, with the original Ava design hailing from Finland, for which the patent was filed in 1953. The main difference between the original design and the new Chubb design are that in the original design there is the use of a double-bitted flat key, fewer sliders and no false gates or notches, which was actually the main improvement described in the 1963 Chubb patent. Even more interestingly is that Chubb used a variant of that original Finnish AVA design in some locks like this window lock. The smaller AVA cam locks we saw earlier are in some ways both similar to the 1953 Finnish design and the 1963 Chubb design. They have fewer sliders inside, 9, not 10 like the larger AVA locks, and they don't have false notches on the sliders, though they do use a modern AVA key, which isn't like the flat key in the finished design. Albeit, it is a smaller key, one designed to fit the smaller profile of the sliders. Here we can see the visual difference between the larger 10 slider key and the smaller 9 slider key. You may notice from the cam lock key that the bitting is also less extreme. This is because there are only three slider variants, a 4 to 2 slider, a 3 to 3 slider and a 2 to 4 slider. There are no 5 to 1 or 1 to 5 sliders used. This means that the number of key combinations is close to 20,000 keys in comparison to the 10 slider locks that have closer to 10 million. Note that like the larger ABBA locks, the key locates in the lock only one way around, and this is controlled again through subtle profiling in the keyway to correspond to the key, but this time using warding in the keyway and corresponding cutouts on the key bitting at the highest points. So you can see that I can't insert the key any further than this, this way round, but I can turn it this way round. You'll note that there is some very subtle warding at the top of the keyway here, a little L-shaped notch and therefore there must be corresponding cuts in the bitting which are here at the highest points to allow the key to slide through when it's correctly oriented. Now we know that the AVA design comes from the early 1950s but that design itself is very reminiscent of some safe locks like the Chroma Protector from the 1870s or thereabouts which uses a flat double bitted key to locate double-ended sliders at the shear line, much like the AVA. So how can the AVA lock be picked? Well, in the case of the small cam locks, some people have made tensioners that grip the key centering cup at the back of the core using a tensioner with a wood or a rubber tip and picking using a standard hooked lock pick to manipulate the sliders. You can see there is the cup at the back there it, and that would normally just center the key. It's almost perfectly round and so you'd need to tension that using something which can grip that round tip. While a tricky pick, the small differences in the bitting through only having three sliders compared with five in the larger Avalox and having a lack of false gates makes this picking very possible. With the larger 10 wafer Avalox, Picking in this manner becomes extremely difficult, if not impossible. I mean, just look at the extreme bitting on a key like this. To pick these locks, a two-in-one pick and decoder tool is often deployed. And here is a two-in-one Chubb Ava pick and decoder tool. This was originally designed by Chris Belcher, and this is a reissued version by GJ Locks. Tensioning of the lock using this tool requires the use of the last or tenth slider. That has to be set at the shear line to tension the core and allow all the other sliders to bind at the same time. 
So the first step in using this tool is to determine which tension tip to use in which orientation to set slider 10 and bind the other sliders. So you can see here that I have three drive tips or tensioning tips. And you can see that they come in all the possible variants, a three to three, a two to four or four to two tip. And in this case, we have a one to five or five to one, depending on the orientation. The correct drive tip should be an exact replica of the last section of the key, including the bitting for wafer 10. That, as I said earlier, will essentially pick that last wafer and allow the core to be tensioned, binding all the other sliders. Once the core is tensioned, the picking tip of the tool can then be used to take readings at each of the remaining slider positions, where a slider at the shear line will have a movement of six demarked increments as determined on the tool. And those in a false gate will have a movement of four increments. Here are a few sections of a recent picking video of this 10 slider chub other padlock. And we're going to just test how much movement we have at each position. And that isn't feeling like that's about four or five positions. That isn't right. So just going to try and advance that on. There we go. Just move that on a little bit. And let's try that now. Oh, that's far more movement. So that's uh, two, that's at least six on that. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep it there. It's just something, just something, just uh, sticking. And there we go. I've got it. And now if I remove this from the vise, there we go. We have an open. So, so there you go. The Chubb Ava Lock. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed it too. I just want to say thank you to my friends GJ Locks, John, Jamie and Paul for their picture contributions and if you like this video please like and comment below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.